Hey everyone, hope you're well. I know it's been a while since I've spoken to you one-on-one. -on -one. It feels like I've been doing a lot of screen capture stuff recently, so it's it's a nice change to speak to you guys face to face again. Well, face to that empty, bottomless black pit of a lens, but same thing. So I'm guessing a lot of you guys are exactly like me and you tackle your print-on-demand like I do with a strong focus on designing for t-shirts and optimizing for everything else. But stickers, especially on Redbubble, is such a huge market. And I kind of feel like it would be a disservice for us not to give stickers some special attention from time to time. I mean, if you had to decide to just focus on one product in your Redbubble shop, uh, to the complete neglection of everything else, you could do worse than stickers. But I would say when you're starting out, optimize for as many products as you can. But stickers, give them some love, give them some time. You won't regret it. So saying all of that, we're gonna be looking exclusively at stickers today. I'll take you through everything I've learned in my two years on Redbubble about stickers, optimizing, best practices, do's and don'ts, and I hope you enjoy. So first things first, don't be afraid of color when it comes to stickers. Go bright, go bold, do statement designs that really stand out. Remember, when it comes to apparel, people have reservations about bright colors. Some people love bright color on their apparel, whether it's a t-shirt or a cap or anything else, and others prefer more neutral color palettes. So when it comes to stickers, think about how people are using stickers. They're decorating their laptops their PC cases, their hydro flasks. They're not too bothered about if this color suits them. They're just looking for really bright statement designs. I'm not saying they're always looking for these designs, but they do sell really, really well. And stickers is a good excuse to just be free with color. Typography and text designs are always a good option for stickers, but make them interesting. Explore some text effects to make your designs stand out on the search page. Anybody can do plain text designs. And this makes it easier. If you have a winner of a plain text design, it makes it easier for other people to copy. So up your typography game, give your text that little bit extra, and it's more likely to catch someone's eye. So let's talk about the size of stickers available on Redbubble. This is the smallest size. It's 7.6 by 7.6 centimeters. And this, this is the largest size sticker that Rebel will offer. So you wanna make sure that you export your designs at the highest resolution. Redbubble recommend 2,800 pixels by 2,800 pixels. And that'll ensure that your stickers are available on all four sizes. If you don't, your buyer is only going to get the option of the resolution that matches the size when they're searching. So don't cheat yourself out of a sale by only offering smaller stickers. It's also worth mentioning that you want to make sure your design, if you have small detail, is not going to be lost on the smaller design. But you also want to make sure there's enough visual interest that the bigger design still looks pretty cool. So it's a fine line. So just experiment and make sure you're considering the very, very vast size differences that stickers can be. So another thing to think about, and this is true of all digital art you may have created in the past that you think might work as a print ready, specifically a sticker, a print ready sticker. Now remember that we treat digital art differently to print art. So I created this skeleton in an astronaut's helmet specifically for my Instagram. I'm still trying to make it work, hence why it, it's not up there yet, guys. I, I like to faff a lot and this one just wasn't looking right. So it's still very much a work in progress, but I decided it would make a really, really cool standalone sticker. The problem was I had a lot of very specific digital treatments on this design. So first things first, I put it into a new document that was in CMYK mode as opposed to RGB. So that meant my colors kind of flattened a little bit. So I did the best I could to adjust those back to the brightness that they were in the digital version. But I also had a lot of gradients that had their opacities turned down, specifically the glass cover of the helmet. Now this would 
give me very unpredictable results when printed. So I wouldn't ever recommend having transparent gradients on a design that's going to be printed. So instead I got rid of all my gradients and I tried to emulate the color changes of the skeleton below the faceplate to make it look like the, the purple glass was distorting the color. So I know that the colors that I've chosen now and the way it looks on my screen will be exactly the way it looks when it's printed. So if you do have a lot of digital art that you've created in the past and you're looking to start a Redbubble shop or Tee Public or whatever the case may be, make sure that you're doing the correct steps to ensure that that design is ready for prints. It may look great on your screen, but when a printer is confused about what color treatments to give to certain sections, it's going to take its best guess and sometimes its best guess makes a terrible result. So a little bit of work to get your digital art ready for prints is very much worth it. Err on the side of caution. If you're unsure whether it's going to print well, then get rid of it and try and emulate that same effect by other means. So while we're on the subject of transparency, sometimes your design will have a lot of negative space within it. And this can sometimes have some undesired effects for stickers when you export as a transparent PNG. So the method that Redbubble uses to print stickers is called a kiss cut, which means they print your sticker on a sheet and cut around it, and it leaves about an eighth of an inch white border around the entirety of your sticker. Sometimes this looks fine, and other times it really doesn't. So if you have a design with elements too far apart, it ends up looking like this. So if someone had to buy this, they would have all of these separate stickers to assemble, as well as gaps within the design. This is just badly optimized design for a sticker. If this is your design, I don't need to give you a hard time, but I would perhaps enclose all of these elements within a circle by putting a white circle behind the design so the transparency doesn't get cut out. So if you're not sure how it's going to look, upload it to Redbubble and have a look at the preview before you publish your design. That should be all the indication you need as to whether it's going to work or not. And also, if you design a white design or it has white elements within it, it would be absolutely lost against the white of the sticker border. So a quick color change or even a border around the white part of your design can fix this. So in my experience, I get a lot of success with stickers that are circular. And this I think is true for any stickers that are enclosed in a basic shape, whether it be a rectangle or a square as well. You'll find this when you start making regular sales on a variety of your designs on different types of products, you can begin to see the kind of patterns, the things that people go for, whether it's the color or the shape, and you can use that to inform your design choices going forward. One great thing about stickers is the possibility of customers to bulk buy one of your designs. I recently had a bubble mail from a teacher thanking me for about 20 stickers that he had bought. It was a climate change design, very simple, circular design, nice thick lines, bright colors, and he said he'd use them as prizes in his ecology class. So bulk sales on stickers is awesome. Right, so we're going to cover sticker packs as well as your best export settings for your stickers in one fell swoop. If you haven't explored sticker packs, you really, really should. I realize these three designs don't work as a set, but bear with me for this one. Generally, you want to have a theme in your pack, whether it's flowers or trees, whatever the case may be. Pick a theme and just ensure that your stickers have a fair distance apart on your artboard. So once you've uploaded your design, go into edit mode and ensure that none of the white borders on your sticker packs is touching because this is essentially the, the mark where the sticker will be cut. And if they do, just go back into Illustrator or your graphic design tool of choice and just move them a little further apart. That's all I have for you folks. If you have any sticker tips, let me know in the comments. I think I've given you everything I possibly can about how to make kick-ass stickers and ensuring they're the right size and optimized perfectly. Stickers need some one-on-one -on -one attention every so often, so give them your time. You won't be disappointed, I assure you. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. 
Happy sticker making and happy sales and I'll see you soon.